smile at them. It's good to smile. It's always good to share a smile to, with someone. And uh, tell them, you are blessed of the Lord. Amen. This morning I am, uh, it's afternoon. It's already afternoon. So this afternoon I am well. I am blessed of the Lord. He is my Lord and my Savior. As I stand here to share the word of God, I share the word of God with a testimony that indeed the word of God can change, can transform, it can also save. And I stand here as a testimony and I thank God. Uh, Dr. Moses has said, Nimefunga hiwiki mzima. Hakusema nimefunga nini. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so please, Musi, yande kuji. Okay, hakusema nini nimefunga, but... Uh, I thank God for this opportunity and uh, to, to stand here it is an honor and a privilege and I am uh, for the sake of those that are watching online and those that may be watching later I want to say that my name is Elijah Ashie, more to that I love the Lord and uh, I am a father and I am a husband to one wife and a father to two children, and I thank God for that, for it is a privilege and an honor. And today being the Men's Sunday, I am standing here to represent all the men. I am not the most senior or the most junior of them, but it is the favor of God for them to even think about me. I am so humble, I am so privileged. And Baba Grace, on I do it, I do no kera mutu gateri na gatuka convinced. Oh, I thank God for that privilege and honor because it is not my doing, it is the doing of the Lord and it is marvelous in our own eyes. I love following social media. So <laughs> there's this thing that has been going on, I think, for the last this week. There are these boys, I don't know where they are in the wilderness. I think walikuwa mengia kwa jeshi. And now they have been saying, they were shooting a selfie and they were saying, when you walikuwa wanasema hatutaenda mbali huku ni wapi huku ni wapi like it's like a, a, a joke like they were saying like you know when you are growing up you might face challenges growing up and people might tell you you will never go far you will never make it you will never get this you will never achieve this and now they were thinking they have achieved because maybe wameingia kwa jeshi and they are thinking now uh, when you walikuwa wanasema hatutafika mbali hapa ni wapi so, and it, it got me and say, uh, I felt like, indeed, anyway, d never, never despise anybody. Especially these children when they are growing up, never despise them. Dis never despise the young men. Because you never know what they may end up becoming. Uh, Abraham Lincoln was very, uh, he, he, was a, uh, he was a former president, he's a former president of this great nation. And he used to say, uh, he used to say that he used to say that when he was greeting children, he was very careful on how he used to address them, because he would shake their hand and look into them, because you never know where, what these children will become in the future. And even uh, us as parents, as uh, as fathers and mothers, let us treat these children with great respect, because. We do not know what the Lord has in store for them. For us, we have already become, and we are also becoming what God wants us to become. But for them, they are in this process of being molded to become what God is molding them to become. This morning, I see it is 12.27, and I am praying to God that he will help me to share the word of God in the shortest time possible. This might be the shortest sermon you will hear, or it might be the longest, depending on uh, the timing. But I believe that as we leave this house of God this morning, we shall live with a testimony. We have already heard, we have seen, Jogu has done a good job, and uh, we thank God for the gift in him, and we also pray that he continue raising many and many men, men to stand here and to witness for what God is doing uh, in their lives. Today is not a Father's Day, but it is a men's day in our church, and thank you, Reverend, for this opportunity to share and to stand here. Baba Grace has been saying, and also this is part of my message, that men are the pillars. Men are the pillars. And when the pillars stand in a house, the house is firm. But when the pillars are shaken, what happens to the house? The house starts crumbling, crumbling and crumbling. 
And when I was preparing for this sermon, my sermon is titled, The Influence of a Father. The Influence of a Father. And when I was preparing for this sermon, I was, I was looking at when, when the devil wants to destroy territories or when the devil wants to destroy families, he mainly attacks the man. Because the man is the one who God has ordained as the head of the house. You read in the book of uh, in, uh, Colossians, like, uh, Colossians, where or, or Ephesians, sorry, when uh, Paul is telling uh, the church of Ephesians that they should uh, love their wives as Christ has loved the church, and they should become the heads of the, in, their, in their houses, in their homes. But many other times we are finding that men are losing this role and it is fading very fast. And as I get into my sermon, uh, it is a three-page sermon, but I am not going to read the word by word. It is not going to be a speech. I am praying that I, the Lord is going to help me. Uh, so our, our guiding, uh, our, our text, uh, our t- text for this, uh, this sermon is coming mainly from the book of Ephesians, chapter number six, beginning to read from verse one through to verse four. And it is projected there on the screen. And I read from verse one, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on earth. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. All right? So this is our, our, our guiding text for this day. And when I was reading this in the word of uh, in the book, in the Bible, uh, the the top heading there, Paul titled it that this is instructions to fathers or instruction to parents. When you go in the Kikuyu Bible, it says uh, this it is an instruction to Koreasiari. So when I was preparing this, my mind was going now to this text, and I was leading and I was thinking now this is a. These are verses that we have all had. Uh, these are verses that we have all had growing up, especially verse number one. When we are growing up, we have been taught, and I'm happy because we have our children here, that children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you. I believe every one of us is a child of a parent. We come into this world, through parents because men are the seed carriers. Women are the, what do we call it? I, I don't want, I, they have the, uh, let me go into biology, kidogo. Women have the, the womb and it is the one that carries the what? The baby uh, from conception until birth. So un- unless two come together and uh, uh, fulfill now what the Lord said in the book of Genesis that go ye out and multiply, go and multiply and, uh, and, uh, and uh, dominate the world and fill the world. And uh, unless these two people come together, there is not going to be a child. So for us to be here, it means that we have an origin from where we come from. Everybody has a background, has a family where they can associate where they can say, these are my parents. They may be living, they may be have passed on to the next life. Uh, may the Lord uh, keep them in eternal peace, for those that have passed on. But everybody has a parent. They can say that this is my father, this is my mother. So the word of God is coming to us and is reminding us that we who are children, we should obey our parents. Because uh, this is the right thing to do. Many uh, Many other times, uh, obey, obedience becomes hard because when you are told to do this, the, uh, one, when you are told to obey, uh, it's like someone is telling you, uh, follow this way and you have your own way, especially when we grow up, that is when we tend to 
become disobedient. But I have noticed because I am a father, of disobedience begins at a very young age. Like even with a two-year-old, you tell them, take this thing from there or turn off that TV and they start throwing tantrums because it is a seed. We are born with a sinful nature. Everybody of us, uh, each and every one of us is born with a sinful nature. And therefore that is why the word of God is reminding us that to obey, it is the right thing. To obey, it is the right thing. However hard it is, it is the right thing. Because the alternative is disobedience. And we find that disobedience is like, is rebellion. And rebellion to God or to even parents is classified as witchcraft. I was reading this in the book of Samuel when uh, Saul, the king, uh, when they saw the king had been sent by God and had been given a message, he had been told, go and uh, to the Amalekites and go and finish them off. And what he did, he went there and he did partly what he was told. And he took some of the cattle, some of the sheep, and brought them back. And, he, and even the king, of, uh, the king Agag that time. And when the prophet Samuel, who had given this instruction, when he came, Saul was happy and was telling him that I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. But Samuel looked at him and told him, but I can hear the cows and the sheep making noise. What have you done? And he said, uh, I thought that the Lord would be pleased with sacrifice. So I took which was best and I preserved it so that I can offer it unto the Lord. But one thing that Samuel told him is this. What does the Lord value more? Sacrifice or obedience? And he told him that obedience is better than sacrifice. So even for us, sometimes we may want to uh, go the other way. We may want to not listen. We may not want to, we may want to follow our minds and maybe think our parents. Now I'm talking even to us, those that have parents that are still alive and they can give you a word of advice and tell you, my son, what you are doing right now is not good. Maybe you have, you think you have become old enough and you have your own home and that nobody can tell you what to do. Nasema huku ni kwangu. I am the man who makes the decision. I am the one who pays my bills. And the father, maybe the father is telling you, please, my son, stop going in this way. I have seen people go in this way. And what has happened to them is that they have perished. But you keep on saying, I know what I am doing. So it is a challenge even for us that are old and even for these children. When we tell you to stop doing things, we are not telling you because we hate you. Actually, when we are telling this, it is out of love. Because for uh, every father, it is the joy of every father to see their children succeed. It is the joy of every father to see their children become someone. It is the joy of every father to see their children achieve the greatest success in their lives. And this success cannot be achieved if we obey if we honor our father and our mother. Some of you, maybe there's dishonor. You do not even honor the words of your father. You do not even honor them. You do not even remember them. Some of you even don't maybe talk to your parents. You spend, uh, you stay a whole month without even checking on your father or your mother. You don't even pick up the phone and call them and find out how they are doing. Let us so, uh, show this honor to them because they were there for us when we were growing up. Maybe also show them that we honor them for who they are in life. Maybe they did not give you the best when you were growing up. Maybe they mistreated you. Maybe they did not offer you the best education. But the word of God here does not say, honor your father and your mother if they do this. It says, honor your father and your mother, regardless of who they are. It doesn't matter what they do. It doesn't matter what they don't do. But the word of God is clear here that honor your father and your mother. And this is the only commandment that we find in the Bible that has a promise so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy your life here on earth. Now, coming mostly to the text that I was uh, talking about is the influence of a father. The word of God says there, verse number four. Fathers, or here we can include and say parents, do not do things that will make your children angry. Instead, teach them carefully as they grow up. Help them to understand the message of the Lord 
and help them to obey it. This is a verse that has to, uh, it's a summary of instruction that is stated in both the negative and the positive because we find here that the word of God is saying the negative part, do not do things that will make your children angry. Do not do things that will make your children angry. And to make us understand how important the influence of our father is. When I was preparing this sermon, I looked into the statistics. And uh, considering where we are living in, we are living in the United States of America. We are no longer living in Kenya. Though we have our origin in Kenya, we must understand where we are living in and where we are raising our children. Because this is a foreign land, and this is the land that Reverend was talking when you get to that land that the Lord is going to give you, do not forget. Because many other times when we get here and we tend to forget that we are in the land of milk and honey. We are in the land of plenty. But the challenges that our children are facing here are double or even extra than those that are in Kenya. And when I was looking at the statistics, uh, we are living in a society, in a world, especially here in America, that devalues manhood. Like you feel like ma a man is not appreciated. Here they say that <laughs> man comes at number four. There is a woman, uh, there is a child. Child, then the woman, then the dog, and then the man is at number four. So you find the value of man has been downgraded. But in God's eye, the man is on top there of the hierarchy. Because when God created the universe, he first created the man. But you find we are living in a society that has devalued manhood. We are living in a society that manhood is under attack every day. It is being redefined every day. Like today you wake up, you feel like, I want to be a, a woman. You go out there and you say, I want to be a woman. Go to the hospital and you tell the doctors there, you know what, I feel like today I am a woman. I want to change and become a woman. And you go into surgery and after a few months, we start calling you Mrs. And what is this, man? These are the things that we are seeing every day being redefined, being redefined. So you feel like if we do not stand as men, if we do not stand as men and teach our children to be men and girls, they will be confused because there's so much confusion going on in the world. So the influence of a father or a parent is very important. The statistics are saying this, that as I said, I mentioned, when the devil wants to destroy a territory, he kills the fathers. When he wants to destroy the territory, he comes and kills the fathers. And the fathers become unaware of what is happening. Uh, and the fathers become, any, how, they don't pay attention to what is going on because how is the devil killing the fathers? He makes them so, so busy that they don't have even time with their children. Many men, and this is more, it's, like, it's, 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 a, it's like a fact, like many men uh, regard the issue of upbringing children as a, as a woman's job. Like, ours is to provide. When it is time to go to the maternity, we take them there. When it is time to bring the baby, we go with the car seat, we put the, car, uh, the baby in the car, we put them back home. We go for one week paternity leave. Then after that, we go back, back to work. Because this society is so demanding, like you feel if you stay at home, you'll not be able to meet the bills. So we have been bombarded with these things. We are living in a society that is devaluing and in a territory that is destroying the manhood. And the fact that these, uh, the stats are these, that when you look at the statistics, 63% of the youth who are committing suicide in this nation are mostly from homes that do not have fathers. 90% of all runaway children are from fatherless homes. 85% of children with behavioral disorders, those that are in maybe homes, uh, home health, uh, from uh, homes without fathers. 71% of school dropouts are uh, children whose homes do not experience or have the love of the father. 85% of the youth in prison are from homes that do not have the fathers. I can continue and continue about these statistics, but what I want to drive home is that the role of the influence of a father is very important. A father's influence, it is out of proportion as compared to his mocked and diminished 
role in our society. Men have been mocked. Men have been demeaned. Uh, the, 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 their role has been mocked. Their role continues to diminish every day because we are living in a world where men no longer say uh, they are the breadwinners. Women can provide. So if a woman can provide, so the father is not that important because you know when growing up it was the father's role to provide. So when the children wanted something, they had to go through the mother, the mother to go through the father and request for what they want. But now women can provide, they have their own money, they have their own bank accounts. So if a child comes and says, Mom, I need this and this, and the father is not there, what is the mom going to do? They are going to provide for that child. So the child will not feel the importance of the father because the father will not get the message. Maybe you get the message late and you find because it, women have been empowered and not in a bad way, but they have been empowered so they can be able to do things that were seen like it is a man's role. And so the man role has become diminished and diminished. But this does not mean that his influence has also diminished. So you see, as a child matures up, they look up to the fathers as role models. But where are these fathers? They are nowhere to be seen because we have been made busy. We have been kept at bay. We have not been involved in the upbringing of our children because these parenting things uh, has to be intentional. As for us men, we have to be intentional in the way we bring our children. Because if we do not give us, uh, if we do not become intentional in the way we parent our children, things are moving very fast. Things are moving very fast. Things are moving very fast. If you do not enter into that child's life or that child's world, you will not understand what is going on. Uh, one of the things I appreciate is the way sometimes uh, the, the schedules here work, especially for someone who has little children growing up, especially if you are, uh, uh, you, 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 you are a couple that works together, you can be able to monitor what is going on with your children. Because at one time, the children must be with one parent. Because when you have young children, there are some sacrifices you have to make for the family because these children are the greatest investment for us and as an investor you have to look at what uh, investment you're going to make at what uh, what risks you are going to avoid so that you do not lose your investment every investment has risk and the risk that our children face you have to make some sacrifice so that these children will not go and face this risk so uh, one thing i appreciate is when I am with my children, I am able to see how they are growing. I am able to see how they are behaving. And you can be able to instill the values that you want. So in, in everything, there is a silver lining. In every cloud, there is a silver lining. We may complain and say that how the challenges that are here in the United States, the challenges of bringing children, but I want us to encourage, I want us to go to back, uh, back to the word of God in the times of Noah. Even in the times of Noah, in the times of Lot, it was still hard bringing up children. But even that time, there were still remnants. So let us not complain. Let us not say that, oh, this is a harsh environment for our children to grow up. Let us not excuse the habits or the behavior or the disorder and the patterns that we are seeing in our children and say, this is because they are growing up in America. What should guide us is the word of God. Because the word of God is universal. Wherever it goes, it is universal. It doesn't matter whether you are bringing them up in Kenya or whether you are raising them up here in America. The word of God is universal. And it should be the one that is going to guide us. As I continued preparing for this sermon, I was looking at another statistic that, uh, that was done by some... Uh, a society called Promise Keepers. It's a religious organization that was saying, uh, talking about uh, the, the role of a father, that if a father does not go to church, even if his wife does, even if his wife does go, only one child out of 50 becomes a regular believer. That even if a, if a, father, if a father does not attend church, 
only one, like that is 18% there. Like 18% of children will become regular believers. And uh, the second, uh, when a father attends church, even if the mother does not go, 66% of children will attend. So you see now this disparity, like if a wife or if your wife is the one who attends church and you as a husband, you do not go to church, you see the influence that you bear is more than the influence of your wife. Because children as they mature, they look up to, uh, mostly they look up to their fathers for role models. And it is why you find even when ladies get married, what they are looking for in that man that they want to get married to is like a, a photocopy or a re replica of their, of their father. So for you fathers, if you want your daughters to have also a good home when they grow up, especially for those men that now have daughters that are almost getting married, we have to set a high standard for the men we want to be to see as son-in-laws. And even for the mothers that are, as if you have sons that are almost getting married, we also have to set standards for these sons because they also look for someone who can be like their mother, who can show them love, who can show them respect. And the other thing is that when both parents attend church, 75% of these children will become regular church members. So it is not even 100%. You may do everything. You may even attend church, both parents, but it is not totally guaranteed that your children will become a regular church course. But it is an attempt. This is the best thing you can do for them. Show them the way. I know we are all here because our parents took us to church. I remember I was taken to church when I was a small boy. I was baptized when I was a few months old. And because of that seed that was planted in me, that is why I have also had that desire to seek the Lord for myself and find more and more about him. So if we deny these children that opportunity, it is wrong because it was also given to us. So we should extend the same and show them how important it is. I was listening to another preacher who was saying that we should make Sunday worship more important or rather as important as our work on Monday. That if you consider your work on Monday important, because most of us work Monday through Friday or even over the weekends, if you consider your work important, you should consider worship to God more important or even more, more important than that work. Yes, the work is the one that provide for our bills. But the Lord says in the book of Psalms 23 that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack anything. If you honor God with your time, God is not man. God is not mocked. What you invest is the thing, is the, uh, he, he, he is a God who is able to compensate you and give you much more. So, fathers, we have a role to play in the upbringing of our children. And this role will not uh, it's going to become harder and harder as we continue living because we are living in the end days, the days that were prophesied. You remember in the book of uh, uh, when Paul was talking to Timothy, when men will become lovers of money, will become, they, uh, I, I, I'm not sure where that exact text is, but Paul was telling Timothy about what was to come. And these are the days that we experience these things. So unless we stand up as fathers and become the influence or the role models to our children, we shall continue seeing our children becoming miserable and miserable. And what happens when these children do not find role models? They go finding out there. Because how do children learn? They learn through observing. They learn through listening. They learn through exploring, experimenting, and asking questions. So if the children observe what you are doing, they will learn. Because children see, children do. What they see you do at home, that is what they will do. You tell your children, you go to church, but I'm going to stay home and watch soccer. I'm going to stay home and watch football. That is what will grow in their minds. That even me when I grow up, or maybe when I can be able to make my decision, I also want to stay home like my dad. But if we show them that church is important, they will grow up with this mentality that God is important to my father. God is important to my father, and also God is important to me. Because children learn by example. If we show them this, we show them this. And 
the word of God is saying that there in the book of uh, in in Ephesians that we should train them, we should train, uh, we should uh, we should instead teach them carefully so that they grow up. One thing about when someone is well trained, you do not panic when they go out into the world. Like if you are trained, if you are a qualified nurse, and someone has trained you, that Larry, even when they send you into the field. They are not scared of the mistakes that you will do. But if you do not train these children up well, we will always be panicking when they go out there. You are always checking up on them. Hello, Mukonanani? Narudi Sangapi? Because you are worried what they might be doing. But if you have trained them up well, you are confident even letting them go out there because you know what you have instilled in their lives. So fathers, let us rise up. This is a call to fathers, especially us, that know God, it is a call to fathers, that we should not let the raising up of our children be the job of our wives. It should not be a mother's job. You know why? Let's go back to Genesis. When God created man, he told him, uh, and he looked at him and he, he saw man was not, uh, he looked and made, made, a, made a companion for him. He told Eve, this is going to be, uh, he told Adam, Eve is going to be your helper. Eve was not to come and do what Adam was supposed to do. Eve was supposed to do what? To help. And a helper comes to do that which you have been doing, but to give you assistance. So many of the times when uh, us men, when we have children, it's like we neglect this job of raising children. But this is the most important job for our father, raising your children because you make them or you instill the values that you want them to have when they grow up. I'm almost finishing because I want to finish maybe by 2.30. So we are almost there. <laughs> we are almost there. So the other thing, how, 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 do, uh, how do children also learn now? The other thing I had said they learn through observing. What are you showing your children to do? They say, you do, I do. Then, number two, listening. How do we talk to each other when our children are there or when they are not there? This is also very important. Children learn and listen a lot. I have two children. One is four, one is two, almost one in three. But these children, I have noticed, they have a very sharp skill of listening. They listen. Me and my wife, we talk in Kikuyu in the house because we want them to know Kikuyu. This is a personal desire for me. I think it is a, I, I, I will feel I have achieved if they know Kikuyu. But because I don't want them to, to keep on talking uh, English with their grandfather and their grandmother. So when we are talking Kikuyu, if I see them listening, listening so much, they are trying to understand what we are saying. So if we, we are very careful on the way we think, uh, on the way we, uh, we, we, we talk to one another, because they pick up very fast. Because uh, many of the times I have seen the way they also talk to one another is how we talk to one another. If, we show, if I show my wife love, they will also love, uh, my, uh, my son Peter will love her sister Esther because it comes automatically. Or if I speak words of encouragement, if I don't, uh, I don't shout, one thing I try not to do is to shout or to talk in a loud voice because I am trying to show them, yes, even when you are angry, there's a way you control your anger. How do you behave when you're angry? Because children learn and listen, and the way we talk to one another, these children is how they talk to one another when they go out there. And you'll find how children talk is what they have seen from parents. If you hear your child cursing or using vulgar words, ask yourself, where have I used those words? Or where have you heard them? Because there's a behavior you will see with your children. Maybe when they go out there interacting with other children, when they come back home in the evening, of course, they will pick up behavior, one or two there. And when they come back into the house, they will attempt to do that thing. Like if your son or you, if you have a son and they go out there and they see other the boys doing some asset, because he has seen them do, when he comes back in the house, he will attempt to do those things. So we should also be careful on what our children are learning out there so that we can be careful to guide them 
on what they should pick and what they should not pick because you will not keep them from going out there. What you can do is help them to pick the good and the bad. Children also learn by exploration. They like exploring and finding out things for themselves. So we should always be there to guide them, as fathers especially. For us that have uh, children, let us be there to guide them. When they are trying to explore things for themselves, let us not be the, the father that says, stop, stop every, every minute. Because if you hinder them from trying these things, especially in your home, they will go and try and find out and explore out there in the world. So the best thing you can do as a father is to be there and watch. If it is something dangerous, because like there are, uh, there are trends on TikTok, like you find children, uh, the, the teenagers, there's a trend like, like, like comes up every month, every week, a new trend. And if you find it is something that is dangerous and your child is going to get uh, hurt by this, talk to them and tell them, yes, I know it is a trend that is happening and you want to try this, but please, this is not the right way to do. But we should not also be parents that will hinder our children from discovering who they are because we don't want them to explore. Because at the end of the day, we want them to be the best version of themselves. And those things that you, you know, may not be the things that your children know right now. The things that they know right now, let me tell you, my God, they know so many things at the age of two. They can be able to even operate a phone. They can even be able to even crack your password. For us, even opening a, your father's phone was a grave mistake if your father had a phone. But for them, they will come and grab your phone. You find them, they are already uh, going to the camera and even taking a video. Because these things, they have known them from a very young age. So let us not be people that we limit our children from attaining uh, full potential experimenting and uh, that is another way of where, how children learn so we should be there to guide them on how they experiment what they have learned because not everything is to be experimented some things uh, like you know we are living in a society in America that showing love publicly is not something they care about people will show love publicly they don't care whether children are there or not so for us, we also need to cover our children from, uh, we do not want them to be exposed to this at a very uh, young age because we also want to preserve their innocence. So we should also talk to them about such things from a very young age. Fathers, this is a challenge to you. If you have a daughter, learn to show them how to be loved. Be the first person that they will love before they go out there and meet a man. Because when you show them, how to go out on a date. You take them out on a date. Tell them, order everything you want. Pay for it as a father. So even now when this uh, boy comes into the house and he's taking your child or your daughter out for dates and dinner, this daughter will not be shocked and say, wow, this man is showing me love. Because they already have a reference point. My father has shown me this. So unless that man offers something else, this daughter is not going to be swept off their feet. And even mothers, show your, child, uh, your son's love so that they will not be confused by these women of this, uh, of this land because they can, they can confuse them. So let us stand there and show our children how to love and also how to love others. Another way is asking questions. Children love asking questions. And this is how they learn most of the, the things that they learn. So when they ask questions, let us have an open heart. Let us not put them aside and tell them that I am tired. Because let me assure you, if you don't answer those questions, they will get answers. Google is there. Siri is there. Right now you just need to press on your phone and say, Siri, what is the answer to this? And the answer comes. But they want to, to ask you because they've, they know you are a father. You will give them the honest truth. And if it is something that you don't know as a father, also engage these sites. Use Google. Tell them, you know what? I don't know maybe what you're asking, but I, will, I would want us to learn together. This is an opportunity for you to share the word of God. So now, going to the other part of the question, uh, part of the sermon is, because we want these children to learn, what are the resources that we can use to use them, uh, to teach them? And the number one resource that we can use is the word of God. 
the Bible says, uh, the Bible says in the Second Timothy three, verse sixteen to seventeen, all Scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. All Scripture. Let us employ now the Word of God as the number one tool for training our children. Whenever they are asking these questions, find a way to bring in the word of God into this conversation so that they will know what is the perspective from the word of God. Because the word of God is the only truth that will not change. Things will change today. The president of the United States will change today. We have seen what Joe Biden has come, the things that he has introduced, especially in the White House. Sometimes you watch the things that are happening there. And you, so things will change, leaders will come, leaders will go, but one thing that will not change is the word of God. And a father's responsibility is to acquaint his children with the scripture. That is the father's number one responsibility, to acquaint your child with the scripture. Before they go out there and learn ABC, before they go out there and learn one times one, teach them the word of God. Let it have the first priority in their hearts. And it is said, you cannot pass on what you do not know. Teachers teach what they know. So if you want to teach, you must also learn the word of God as a father. You must give it priority. That is why I was saying, if you show your children that it is important to you, it is going to also to become important to them. But if you show them that it is not important, telling them to go to church, they might go because they respect you and they fear you, but it is not in their hearts. So, men, let me challenge you. It is time we woke up from our slumber. And those that have already woken up, those that are sitting down, it is time we put into action. Because we may all be in different stages, we may be in different places, but let us be the best influence that we can be for our children. If in your home you do not have a time for devotion, please let this year, or maybe say, let's say next month, implement a time of devotion with your family. Call them for our family meetings. I want her to sit down. Because you know, men, you are the CEO of that house. And you won't tell them, this is now what we are going to do for the next month. This is what we are going to do for the next year. If you have not done that as a man, if you do not have that structure, that system in your home, implement one. A time of devotion, show them that it is important. And also be a partaker of that devotion yourself. You may not be born again, but show your children it is important to you. In that process, God is going to change you. You can teach your children through various ways, but let it be through. Let the number one uh, syllabus be the word of God. Let us teach them the word of God. Let us model what, our, what we want our children to become. Let us instill the values that we want our children to have. As I conclude, dads and fathers, let us remember this. Love plus time is equals to a good relationship with your children. It is not love plus money. It is love plus time. Yes, you may give them the money, you may provide for them, but if you do not invest the time, you will look back and say, Sina si akwa, ni ti jeragiria, si horagiro mamua odimu. Si jeragiria ni, they don't surprise me with Father's Day gifts, you just, it's fine, they always remember their mother, but maybe it is because you are not there. It is not too late. Maybe you are thinking, maybe I, I don't have time, they are already grown up. No, get into their world, invest time, try and find a way how you can squeeze yourself into their lives. Uh, another thing let us remember, that however bad or however we feel like our children are lost or gone, we should never give up on them. Maybe you are looking at your children and you are thinking, my child is wasted. How am I going to recover this? The story of the prodigal son 
is an encouragement. You remember this father, he had two sons, one went away and he wasted his life. But his father had always this longing that one day my son will come back. So however, or whichever situation your child might be in, maybe they have gone and gotten into drugs, maybe they made a wrong turn in their life, maybe they made a wrong decision and you are thinking that my child is lost, let us never give up on them. Let us always raise them up to God in prayer. Let us always support them in prayer. Let us always be the greatest cheerleaders for our children because we want to wear them as ornaments because it is said that success has many fathers but failure is an orphan. When your children succeed, you will be happy. You will rejoice and you will be excited. But when they fail, I know there is a feeling that you feel like you are downcast and you are feeling, oh my, you start comparing them to other children who are succeeding. Let us stop comparing our children with others. We are having a conversation with the teenagers one time. And one thing they told us to tell you parents is that you should stop comparing them with other children. Take your child for who they are and raise them up for who they are. Stop comparing them with the other child. Maybe those strengths that other children have, their child does not have them. Use what strengths they have and the weaknesses they have to mold them to become the best version that they can become. So a godly father or a father who is aware of what he's doing is always aware of his influence. This is a father who is always aware of what his influence is going to, how his influence is going to impact his children. So always be aware that your influence, however diminished it may be right now because of the society we are living in, be aware that your influence is very important. And the little eyes, the little ears, they are seeing, they are hearing what you are saying and what you are doing. And they are always going to copy you. So show children, uh, teach them how to come to the house of God. Teach them to give an offering. Teach them to pay their tithes. Teach them to come and give thanks to God. Teach them to sow a seed. I remember there's a man in the Bible, uh, Job, I remember. Job was a man who always, uh, every time his children went out there for a party, he would go before the Lord and offer a sacrifice as a uh, like an atonement because he didn't know what his children did. As fathers and as mothers, now together as parents, let us raise altars for our children because these children will only conquer because of the altar that is supporting them because every child has to have an altar that is speaking over their lives. And if you don't raise one, and then you send them out there into the world. They will face others who already have something that is backing them up. So also raise an altar. Raise something that is going to speak on behalf of your children when they go out there. And also teach them what you want them to become. When you teach them the truth, you will not be afraid. Because however, the con even if they face confusion, even if they face uh, challenging times, even if the the laws are changed, even if people become women, men become women, and women become men, and uh, th these things will not confuse them because they know who they are in the Word of God. So I, as I come to that conclusion, I want to remind us that we are very influential as fathers. No matter what someone has told you, remember that you are very influential. And uh, the decisions that you make for that house, they influence the generation that will come. In, uh, in Deuteronomy, the word of God says that, uh, love the Lord your God with all your mind and with all your strength. Love him with all that you are. Always think about these commands that I am giving you today. Teach them to your children at all times. Talk about them when you sit together at home. Talk about them as you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. Tie them as signs on your arms and on your heads so that you remember them. Write them on the wood beside the doors of your houses and on your gates. Please 
Let us implement this as fathers. Let us show our children to love God with all their mind, with all their strength, with all they are, with everything that they have. So even as they grow up, show, the way, show a child the way that he should grow up. So even when they grow up, they will not deviate from that way. And children, obey your parents, for it is the right thing to do in the Lord. And if your parent is telling you to do things that you feel they are not right, there, the word of God does not say that you obey. Because also, sometimes we try to tell children to do things that may not be godly or may, may not be in right standing with the word of God. So let us also be careful on the things that we tell our children to obey. We need not to force them. If we teach them the truth, then obedience is going to come easily for them. I may not have said anything, but I might have said something that has impacted you and has uh, reminded you something. And I pray that even as we continue on raising up these children, let us remember that we are raising a godly generation, a nation, a godly ge generation that we live after we have gone. So how do you want to be remembered? As a father, as a mother, leave a legacy in these children. Immortalize what you would want to be remembered for so that even when you are out of this world, people will say, that is the son of so and so. And they are who they are because this was instilled in them. May the Lord bless you so much. May the Lord continue helping us. And may the Holy Spirit of God be with us as we continue raising this generation. Happy Pentecostal Day. Amen. I want to invite the praise and worship and, uh, to come and so that we may end the service. And thank you, Reverend and everyone. God bless you so much. All to Jesus. I surrender.